Hi, everybody. Happy 2023. Happy New Year to you. I'm excited about 2023. I really think I really think it's going to be a good year. So here at Databasey, we've taken the last you know week or two off to just unplug, disconnect, so we can come back stronger and offer amazing content for you this year in 2023. So I'm not a big resolution girl. So I typically will pick a theme and then I'll just work that theme through, through the year. So one year it was the year of Mary. And that meant, you know, Mary got to sleep in and Mary got to, you know, get a massage whenever she wanted. And, you know, my husband would say, oh, wow, another facial. And I would say, it's year of Mary. Well, year of Mary went on for like four years. Um, but then I got serious and I had one year I did like, it was like the year of financial health. So, you know, we did our wills and, you know, we cobbled together, you know, all the little past 401ks, you know, Aaron had some at his old jobs. And so we took the time to get all those consolidated. I mean, just the little things and you kind of just work the theme. Well, this year it is about time empowerment and not just time management because Time management is managing the things that you're currently doing. Time empowerment, however, is really making a decision about, are you spending your time on the right things? Are you spending your time with the right people who bring you joy? And if the answer to that is no, then yeah, it's time to, to, to make some changes. So this year it's about time empowerment and spending time on the things that I want to spend time on, which lucky for you is a lot of good content. So I'm super excited. And we have some announcements today before we get into our Q and a, we were going to do this on Facebook. We ran into some technical issues. Unfortunately we had to abandon that and I'm on an, another platform, but um, we were able to snag a couple questions. Um, so first announcement is we are kicking off our 12 month webinar series. Now I know you're probably thinking, Oh my gosh, 12 months. But here's the thing, a lot of my clients and a lot of fundraisers just out in the world, 2023 for them is about fixing what is broken in their development shop. And so that's what this webinar series is about. So the first one, it's totally free. It's coming up January 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. And it's really looking at are you set up for success as a fundraiser? So after 20 years of doing major gift work, leading national departments of, you know, major gift departments, um, you know, just living in the sector, I've boiled it down to 15 things. You need 15 things to be successful as a fundraiser. So you don't want to miss out on January 25th. We're going to audit together. We're going to audit your shop for those 15 items. So that will be super fun. And it's going to kick off our series because once we know how you're doing in all of those 15 areas, the next 11 webinars will be addressing one or two of those 15 things. So by the end of the year, your fundraising department is going to look very different than it does today, which is, which should excite you. It excites me. Okay. Another exciting announcement. And Something that I'm excited to spend time on in 2023 is we are launching a podcast and it's called Hey Fundraiser. Our first podcast goes live on January 27th, which is a Friday, which I'm affectionately calling Fundraising Fridays. And we'll try to put something out every Friday um, so you can find it on, you know, wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it's, you know, Google Podcasts or Spotify or Apple, um, go ahead and sign up so you don't miss any podcast that we release. And just a little bit about that podcast is, you know, fundraisers are busy. You are pulled in so many different directions. And the last thing you need is like a lengthy podcast, like another lengthy podcast. So this podcast is for the busy fundraiser. So I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes or less. It's going to be power packed. Um, we already have some amazing guests slated. Um, sometimes it'll just be me talking, like get cutting to the chase and talking about how to help you raise more money. 
So our uh, podcast is called Hey Fundraiser. So go ahead and find it on your favorite podcast platform and sign up now. And then that goes live on January 27th. Okay, the other super exciting announcement is that on February 1st, we have a new course that's going live and it's called the Donor Cultivation Method. And this is 20 years of all my best tips and tricks of how to get in the door with prospects, how to make sure you're pursuing the right prospects, what to do when things go south with a prospect, how to recover. It's how to make the first phone call or use an event to springboard your cultivation efforts with a prospect. I mean, everything I've learned over the last 20 years has been poured into the donor cultivation method. So that is going to go live on February 1st. And, you know, something that was, it wasn't easy to film because as fundraisers, we often don't like to talk about our failures. Like we we are goal oriented, right? You give us fundraisers a goal and, you know, come hell or high water, we're, we're going to try to meet that goal. But sometimes we fail. And so in that course, I, I talk about some of the, some of the reasons and, why I failed in some of my jobs. Um, and it, and it has to do with cultivation. It has to do with the 15 things. Some of those things were missing. Um, but just know I pulled, I, uh, poured my heart and soul into the donor cultivation method and a failure is only a failure if you don't learn from it. So I would rather share my successes and my failures with you. So you don't go down the, you know, the same path I did and you can avoid some of those pitfalls. So, Three big things. Um, we have our webinar series kicking off 100% free. So sign up for that. We'll put the link below. Um, sign up for our Hey Fundraiser podcast. So that's going to go live January 27th, which is super exciting. And then the donor cultivation method. If you need any help with your cultivation efforts, if you're if it takes too long to close a gift, if it's hard for you to dis- to figure out when to leave cultivation and enter solicitation, this course is for you. Okay, so before we left Facebook Live with our technical issues, we were able to grab just a couple questions um, from the audience. So I just want to do a cu- like three quick um, AMA questions, which is ask Mary anything. Uh, okay, so Beatrice. Beatrice says, I, I just started my first leadership role as a director of development. Beatrice, congratulations. Um, what is the first thing you would do to set yourself up for success? Okay. So there's a couple things I would do first and foremost, I would have, if, if you have a database administrator, I would have them run some analytics on your database. Like you need visibility into what is the fundraising program at this new organization that you're working at. So how big is the donor pool? How many donors do you have at, you know, over $1,000? Um, do you have 100% board participation in your giving? Uh, what's the retention rate? Uh, you know, how long or how are new donors coming to the organization? Is it through events? Is it through mail? Is it online? Like, just, just try to understand the organization's philanthropic landscape as soon as possible. Because once you, once you know that, you can make really smart decisions about how to deploy staff, if you have staff, how to deploy you know, your precious resources, which include your time, right? It's, resources isn't just money, time is, time is also very valuable. Um, and so that's, that's the first thing I would do is have somebody crunch some analytics for you so you can see the organization's philanthropic landscape. The second thing I would do is have your database administrator pull a list of all your board members and all of their giving and give, get, you know, if you have, you know, some organizations have, Oh, you, you can give or get $10,000 as a board minimum. Um, and I would, I would sit down with each of those board members, like as director of development, you need, you need to have solid relationships with your board. And so schedule 30 minutes with each one. It could be Zoom. You could meet them at their office. You could take them out for coffee. Start your relationship with the board. That's that's one of your areas of success. It will directly affect your ability to be successful. Uh, Third, I would pull a list of all 
open pledges. So anybody who, and, and not, not really the small ones, right? Somebody pledged a hundred bucks in an event. I would pull a list of all pledgers who have an outstanding balance of $5,000 or more. And I would call those people and I would sit down with them. Like clearly they love your organization. Um, so sit down with them. You don't have to, you know, get a payment out of them, but it's just a nice place to start because they've already signed up typically for a multi-year pledge. And this will help you build your portfolio, which is the fourth thing I would do is pick your top 20 prospects. And I'm not talking about board and I'm not talking about open pledgers. I'm talking about 20 corporations, individuals that you, Beatrice, are going to go after and pursue. So those are my, that's my, those are my initial top four thoughts. Uh, so thanks for the question and congrats on the job. Okay, Floyd. Uh, Floyd says, I have trouble getting people to follow our policies and procedures. For example, we have a written policy for accepting pledges but people try to book pledges that aren't documented. Okay. Okay. Floyd, I get it. I, yeah, I see it. I, in fact, I see it with a ton of clients. Um, so one of the things that, I mean, if you're trying to create change in an organization, I mean, change management is kind of a big deal. So instead of like saying, this is the policy and, you know, like, I mean, shoving it down people's throats or like, you know, being on people all the time, then, oh, here comes Deborah. Deborah has now joined our Ask Mary Anything. Uh, she's going to get on her chair and probably take a nap because dog life is really hard. Um, okay, so Floyd, sorry. Um, instead of shoving it down people's throats, one of the one of the best ways I've been able to get people to adopt policies and procedures is to call a 30 minute meeting, make sure that the, make sure that the people that are not um, following the policy and procedure are in the room and just say this meeting is about, you know, going through and making sure that this policy is still relevant and making any updates. Now, this is a very gentle way to get everybody in the room, go through the policy um, and it's going to educate, it's going to educate everybody in the room. So people will be like, oh, I can't book pledges. Um, and then if, if anybody has any brilliant ideas about, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, like maybe something needs to be added, then you can, you can all update the policy and procedure together. So I try to take a more inclusive stance instead of like, you're not following the policy. You're not following the policy. You're not following the policy bring everybody together, go through it, educate them. That's really what this is about. Um, and then say, okay, well, now that we've got everybody's buy-in and they've had a chance to air any concerns. So when people feel heard, if they're like, oh, well, I had a chance to speak, then that will um, help you get people to actually implement um, things that you're trying to get implemented. Good question, Floyd. Okay, our last question is uh, from Matt. He says, I'm new in my role. Uh, congrats on the new gig. And it feels like all the good prospects have been taken by gift officers who have been at the institution longer than me. How can I be successful? Okay, this, this is a systemic issue, right? Like people, people come in and out of jobs. Um, a lot of people will join a new nonprofit and they go to look at prospects and it's like slim pickings. Well, there's a couple things you can do, Matt. You can first make sure that all of the people that are in current portfolios are actually being worked, right? I mean, what I'm trying to say here is, are there really good prospects that are just parked in portfolios so that that particular gift officer can like hold on to them? If that's the case, that is not serving anybody. That's not serving the, the prospect. That's not serving the other gift officer. And it's not serving you, right? And so portfolios need to be equitable. Everybody needs to have a chance to be successful. So you can talk to your supervisor about a redistribution of portfolios, um, which includes really looking at 
if people are parked in portfolios, like here, this is a really good metric to tell you if people are stuck in portfolios. If you look at your portfolio or someone else's portfolio, there's a coverage metric that I particularly love. And the metric is that 80% of your portfolio has had a quality contact, not a bulk email, not an you know event invitation, but like a real quality contact. 80% of a portfolio needs to have a quality contact at least in the last six months. Now that's, it's not an easy metric to meet. So if you are looking at portfolios or your supervisor is looking at portfolios, if people are parked and they're not having quality contact, that is, that's, that is a no go. Um, so then some of that might be redistributed, which is a lovely thing. The second thing is, I mean, really drill down into that database. So here's a couple tips. Look at, look at people in the database who have been giving for, you know, cumulative $500 or more for the last three to five consecutive years and reach out if they're willing to sit down with you or come in for a tour or, you know, have a phone call. That's part of the qualification process. So essentially you might have to reach down into the annual giving pool and, and try to graduate people up to that major gift level. Now, I know that's hard. It's, it's, it's easier said than done. And it takes longer to close a gift when you're, you know, digging into that annual giving pool. And then, then somebody who's made it, you know, made a major gift already, who's already parked in somebody else's portfolio. And it's like, a, oh, this is a $10,000 renewal. This is a $50,000 renewal. So Matt, it is hard. It is hard, but I would do those two things. I would look at the portfolios with your supervisor and see if there can be some redistribution. Second is mine that database. So if you can do a well screening and at least look at capacity uh, and look at who has high capacity, who's a current donor that isn't in anybody else's portfolio and try to start building that relationship. Okay, so those are our three questions for today. Thank you, Matt, Floyd, and Beatrice. Appreciate you. We've got some new people and new jobs, which is super exciting. So let me know, tell me in the comments, <clears throat> excuse me, what, what is 2023 for you? Like I said, mine is about time empowerment. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, but what is it for you? What are, what are your fundraising goals? What are you excited about? Um, what are you worried about? Um, you know, tell me in the comments below and I can give you, I'll try to give you my best advice, um, to either help you be successful or help you get over any fear or things like that. And then just quick reminders. So our first webinar is January 25th at one o'clock Eastern time, totally free. Check out the link below, sign up. Uh, second is the Hey Fundraiser podcast, which is such a day maker. Um, so you can go to heyfundraiser.com and get more details, or you can click the link below, but go ahead and search for us on your favorite podcast platform and just go ahead and sign up so you don't miss an episode. And then on February 1st, our another we have another masterclass that is launching called the Donor Cultivation Method. If you need any help, you need tips and tricks, that course is for you. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great January and don't forget to sign up for the webinar.